Today, we'll look at a group of proofs I'm calling Why Even Bother Writing My Own Book, when I can just copy and paste from Samuel Robotham. He is coming. Cover your butt. Help fight the Flat Earth bots by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more weekly content. 200 Proofs Earth is Not a Spinning Ball by Eric Dubay, 60. Anyone can prove the sea horizon perfectly straight and the earth perfectly flat using nothing more than a level, tripods, and a wooden plank. At any altitude above sea level, simply fix a 6 to 12 foot long smooth leveled board and rise upon tripods and observe the skyline from eye level behind it. The distant horizon will always appear perfectly level with the upper edge of the board. Furthermore, if you move in a half circle from one end of the board to the other, whilst observing the skyline over the upper edge, you will be able to trace a clear, flat, 10 to 20 miles depending on your altitude. This would be impossible if the Earth were a globe 25,000 miles in circumference. The horizon would align over the center of the board, but then gradually, noticeably decline towards the extremities. Just 10 miles on each side would necessitate an easily visible curvature of 66.6 .6 feet from each end to the center. This is probably the one bit of evidence that Flat Earthers have that isn't an outright lie or a misunderstanding of science. If you look at the horizon from sea level, it is flat. There is no dispute about this. However, this is not a problem for the round Earth. The misconception that Dubay has here is that somehow a person very close to the surface of a sphere should be able to see a curve. When an observer is close to the surface of a sphere, a flat horizon is the expected outcome. I could show you a picture of a close-up of a basketball where you can see the curve disappear as you get close enough to the surface. I could show you an animation that demonstrates this very concept. Whereas the observer gets further and further away from the planet, you start to see that the shape is round, and then once we get closer and closer to the Earth, again you see that flat horizon. But, I want to do something better. Here is fake doctor and flat earther, Zach. A while ago, Zach and some of his pals did a laser experiment over a lake. In his video explaining the experiment, Zach created a model of the Earth in AutoCAD. The model is to scale. He zooms out to show you the whole circle and then zooms in to ground level. I shouldn't have to point out the obvious, but I will. The model that Zach uses demonstrates that as you get closer to the surface of a sphere, the horizon starts to look flat. Even flat earthers demonstrate that on a globe, you shouldn't be able to see the curve of the earth when you're on the surface. I could also criticize the math that Dubé uses, but since he doesn't actually show what he did in order to arrive at a 66.6 .6 foot drop on either side claim, I will just dismiss it. I will also link a video to Martimer88 where he goes to the trouble of showing the math and what we should expect on a planet the size of Earth. There is one thing I will point out in Dubé's proof. For whatever reason, Dubé says that there should be a 66.6 .6 foot drop on either side. This makes no goddamn sense. Not because the math is wrong, but because measuring the drop in feet is stupid. This is like measuring distance in ounces. What he should be measuring is a drop in degrees. This just goes to show you how little Dubé bothers to understand the very concepts he promotes. Proof 61 is the same as 60, except that he's quoting Samuel Robotham, who, for some odd reason, thinks that the Earth is so small we should see small buildings on the surface tilting to the side. 62. Samuel Robotham's experiments at the Old Bedford level proved conclusively the canal's water to be completely flat over a six-mile stretch. First, he stood in the canal with his telescope held eight inches above the surface of the water. Then his friend in a boat with a five-foot-tall flag sailed the six miles away. If Earth were a ball 25,000 miles in circumference, the six-mile stretch of water should have comprised an arc exactly six feet high in the middle, so the entire boat and flag should have ultimately disappeared, when in fact the entire boat and flag remained visible at the same height for the entire journey. Like any good experiment, the Bedford level experiment can be recreated. Also, like every good flat Earth experiment, you don't get the same results the flat earthers say you should. In 2016, a group of Flat Earthers decided to recreate the Bedford Level experiment at the same location. To no one's surprise, once the boat, a kayak in this case, had reached its final destination, it could no longer be seen by anyone at the starting location. 
and, to no one's surprise, Flat Earthers somehow considered their failure to reproduce the same results as Robotham as a complete success. Back at Welch's Dam, I was making a last attempt to find Matthew through the telescope, when I caught sight of blurry white flashes, which I took to be the paddles waving back and forth. However, Dave Marsh, who had been operating his Nikon P610 until its battery died, pointed out that it was actually traffic crossing a bridge that he could see in the background for most of the experiment. There was a wave of disappointment until it was realised that the only road bridge on that stretch of canal was in fact Welney Bridge itself, and the cameras could see the cars crossing the bridge six miles away throughout the experiment. Along with the failure of this experiment, there are countless observations made of boats disappearing bottom first, and observations of tall buildings being obstructed from the bottom up. Some of these observations were even made by flat earthers. Somehow, a flat earther can see an image like this of the Toronto skyline, where not just are the bottoms of the buildings and street obscured by the curve of the earth, but a whole island is missing, and yet they can claim that this is evidence that they are correct. The results found by Robotham can't be reproduced, and other observations paint a different picture. And yet Dubé and others still insist that this one experiment invalidates all others. 63. In a second experiment, Dr. Robotham affixed flags five feet high along the shoreline, one at every mile marker, then using his telescope mounted at five feet just behind the first flag looked over the tops of all six flags, which lined up in a perfectly straight line. If the Earth were a ball 25,000 miles in circumference, the flags should have progressively dipped down after the first establishing line of sight, the second would have descended 8 inches, 32 inches for the third, 6 feet for the fourth, 10 feet 8 inches for the fifth, and 16 feet 8 inches for the sixth. Hmm, if only we had a way of recreating this experiment, and if only we knew someone who was dedicated enough to not only take high quality pictures of this experiment, and make all of his observations gathered easily available to all, that would just be great. Hmm, I guess we'll never know. In all seriousness, Lake Pontchartrain power lines act like the flags described by Robotham, and, as it turns out, when we do the experiment that Robotham proposed, we observed a very clear curve. Proof 64 is the same as 60, but with a stupid twist. According to Robotham, a boat moving east to west should have to climb up the curve of the earth and descend down the other side. Not only is this a repeat of 60, it's the same misunderstanding shown all the way back in Proof 4. 65. Also quoting Dr. Robotham. On a shore near Waterloo, a few miles to the north of Liverpool, a good telescope was fixed at an elevation of six feet above the water. It was directed to a large steamer, just leaving the River Mercy and sailing out to Dublin. Gradually, the masthead of the receding vessel came nearer to the horizon, until, at length, after more than four hours had elapsed, it disappeared. The ordinary rate of sailing of the Dublin steamers was fully eight miles an hour, so that the vessel would be at least 32 miles distant when the masthead came to the horizon. The six feet of elevation of the telescope would require three miles to be deducted for convexity, which would leave 29 miles, the square of which multiplied by eight inches gives 560 feet deducting 80 feet for the height of the main mast, and we find that, according to the doctrine of rotundity, the masthead of the outward-bound steamer should have been 480 feet below the horizon. Many other experiments of this kind have been made upon sea-going steamers, and always with results entirely incompatible with the theory that the Earth is a globe. Proof 65 is the beginning of a long trend of, I can see a thing far away, therefore the Earth is flat. This proof, of course, ignores all observations that contradict it. The first thing worth pointing out is that this proof has no way of being verified. We get Samuel Robotham telling us that he estimates that the steamer is 32 miles away. There is no communication between the steamer and the observer to verify the distance that the steamer has traveled. Robotham simply asserts that the steamer should be 32 miles away, but we will never know. Like I said earlier, this proof also ignores every verifiable instance of buildings and other landmarks being hidden by the curvature of the Earth, 
in a predictable fashion. I will link to a video where Cody from Cody's Lab does just that. Using how much of a building is being obscured by the curve of the Earth, he gets relatively close to predicting the size of the Earth. I will also be saving a more thorough debunk of this proof for next time. Proof 66 is the same as 63, just using theodolites rather than flags. Next time. Oh, next time. Oh, boy.